were so many factories that turned out the Springfield rifle. And this, of course, is a Sporter. A lot of people, especially the purists, uh, frown upon these Sporters. I always liked them. Actually, in a way, I like them better than the original military rifles because one has no hesitation in shooting them. You can see somebody went to great lengths, just put a walnut stock and, you know, who knows what was motivating somebody to put white line spacers and a really dramatic sweep to the pistol grip. But it looks okay and it actually feels pretty good. I was just shooting this rifle, got a rollover cheek piece. Parker Hale actually made factory rifles that had that roll over cheek piece and of course this is unloaded got some kind of recoil pad made by no shock n-o-s-h-o-c so i guess this must have well obviously did start out as a military rifle and what i wanted to talk about just quickly was that this is made by smith corona and the springfields were made by, as I said at the beginning, a whole bunch of different factories that you wouldn't be expecting to make Springfield rifles. But there was Smith Corona. The most common one, for me anyway, uh, was Remington. And then Springfield Armory. And then, you know, um, I think Winchester turned out some. And on the barrel, we won't be able to film this. It's not even worth it to try, but you'll see it says somewhere near the muzzle, SC, Smith Corona, and then 643, so June 1943. And I was really lucky with this rifle because yes, it's got a different stock, but it shoots like a house on fire. We were, I was just shooting offhand at 100, over 100 yards. And it, of course, it's not original. I mean, there are people that, isn't this bottom metal interesting? Uh, there are people that go to the trouble of finding all their original military parts and uh, maybe I'll do something about these yellowing ivory cross bolts, but truly it's got a lot of character for you younger shooters. Yeah, maybe you could buy a Savage Axis and you know, you don't want to drill and tap something like this, but this aperture sight is unbelievable. These, these rifles shoot out of all proportion to how they appear and how people talk about them. And what I used to do uh, when I was in university is these were like a hundred dollars at the most. Uh, and you know, there, there were so many from the war. They were everywhere. They were sporterized Enfields, uh, Lee Enfields and P14 Enfields and P17 or M17. Anyhow, this one's pretty good. Somebody did some kind of really aggressive, I don't know, stippling. You can see it's some kind of tool. That would be difficult to overcome because you're going to have to sand down quite a bit to get past it. But I would buy something like this and I would take off the comb and, you know, get rid of this lump here, get rid of the white line spacers, get rid of this recoil pad and put on something black, no, no white line spacers, um, drill out at least the first quarter inch, make this black. And the result would be something that would look like a, a Rigby. Um, and there's nothing quite as charismatic to me anyway, as the Springfield action. There's just something about the Springfield and of course the pre-64 Model 70 and arguably the Model 54. Anyhow, a beautiful sporter, um, you know, so easy to work with in every way. Decent trigger, military trigger, which I always prefer. So what we'll do is we'll take a few shots. And really, I just wanted to show you these sporters. They're still around. People look at them and think, well, they look awkward. They can. Um, on the other hand, they've got a lot of character. They're not being made anymore, of course. And they shoot so well. It's just out of this world. And you know, for practical purposes, in my sort of lifetime experience, hopefully it's not over, uh, 100 yards, 200 yards, that's a long shot 
for most hunting situations, unless you go out of your way to design a longer shot. But for a, a person that's in a tree stand or a stalking hunter, 200 yards is a long way to go. Anyway, we've got the target down there, um, which looks quite far away actually. They're not very big. Anyway, a few minutes ago, I was just shooting offhand and had no trouble hitting every time. So we'll take a few shots and see how it goes this time. And people ask me always, what am I shooting? This time I'm shooting this ammo. I don't know much about it. I think it's Russian ammo and full metal jacket. Um, it's steel, that's interesting. See? And what I noticed with this kind of ammo is quite frequently in certain rifles, the case sticks in the chamber. And I think it's because of the way the steel behaves under pressure. But uh, anyway, to some extent, I judge the rifle on how well it digests this ammo as well as the machine gun ammo I buy sometimes, the surplus stuff, because that's higher pressure. But this Springfield digests everything. I'm just using this today. Anyway, we'll take a few shots and see what happens. Yeah, we could, we could shoot those targets all day long. And so could you. Um, this, these Springfield actions and these aperture sights, of course, they were designed for a war effort. They were designed so that people who worked on farms, people who had never fired a rifle, uh, not that that's true of people who work on farms, but um, could pick up the rifle and hit at 100. And as you know, I'm an advocate of iron sights because that, I think that's a respectable distance and we can put those plates at twice the distance and actually have no trouble hitting them so long as we can see them, which means I have to clear the brush away, uh, which would be true for any hunting situation. You don't wanna be shooting through brush. Anyhow, fantastic rifle. If you see them, uh, easy to say this is no good, it may not look good, but it is good. And the action, excellent. I'm not sure really I could say anything bad about this, this action or this system. And I don't really care about magazines and floor plates and all this other. This is totally practical and you just won't find a better made action. So Smith Corona, um, I have some others that I'll show you over time and that's about it. We finally made it back out with my favorite Smith Corona Springfield Sporter. Oh, what a fantastic rifle. People love the action, right? It's just, it's such a memorable action. And I think a whole legion of younger people watched Saving Private Ryan and they saw Springfields in action. Of course, people who came back from the war viewed the military rifles as too heavy or some of them did. and with the full wood, they, they turn them into great sporters. We just have our usual steel plate there. It has this flaming bomb and it's marked 643. So June 43, that's the barrel. And um, oh, it's a slick rifle. You could hunt with these for a lifetime and never really want for anything else. Actually, excellent aperture sights. And it feeds beautifully smooth.
I guess we destroyed the target, but uh, we'll have to go back and put that together. Anyway, as you can see, very easy to shoot, everything about it, very comfortable. And if you can find these, they are really something else to own and shoot. Uh, like I said, it's too bad they're not as common as they used to be. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's kind of neat watching the target fall apart like that, but um, now I have to go fix it. All right, till next time, take care.